Welcome to this episode of Now That's Something Good, the podcast where we explore the extraordinary in the everyday ordinary. Now here's your host, Sarah Good. Hey friends, welcome back to the podcast. I'm so glad that you are joining in with us. Special welcome to any new listeners out there. We're so glad that you are joining with us today. Our heart is just to every week share with you stories and conversations about how God is working and moving in just the everyday ordinary to do extraordinary things. So today we have a special guest in our friend Rhonda Fields. This is a story that was supposed to be shared with you all back in November. It was a part of our kind of adoption, foster care, orphan awareness month. And this is a really great story that I'm so glad that we were still able to bring to you even a little later than we wanted. But Rhonda, we're going to hear from her and hear her story of just saying yes to God, even when it didn't make sense. And maybe when it was a little hard and especially when she maybe didn't know how it was all going to work out. I want to ask you to do me a favor though. Your reviews and comments on each one of our podcast episodes is huge in helping us continue to spread the word and share stories with other people. So if you wouldn't mind, would you take a moment like right now, like literally right now, pause. And would you go review this podcast wherever you're listening or share a comment on one of our social posts about it. So it just gets bumped up a little more for people to see it. Or if you would take this episode, if it is encouraging to you and meant something to you today, would you go share it with a friend so that they can hear it and be encouraged too? Our heart is to share good things and we want to keep being able to do that. So we appreciate each and every one of you listening and we love hearing from you and hearing how these stories are just kind of impacting you and are being an encouragement to you, how they're actually being something good to you. Well, here we go. Here's my conversation with our friend, Rhonda. Hey friends, welcome back to the show. Today, I have my friend Rhonda here. Yay! I'm so glad. Thank you for being here with us, Rhonda. Well, thank you so much for having me. Of course. Why don't you just tell everybody a little bit who you are, what you do, all of the fun things. Okay. So I am a mom. Yes. I'm a mom of a girl that I adopted when she was 11, and I'm a teacher, and I... um, Golly. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> what else can I what say? What do I do? Church, you know, the whole thing. Um, I teach um, high school choir yes. and AP music theory. I also have some voice and piano students. Love it. As well. That's kind of grown lately. And so, yeah, I'm enjoying that. Um, I've been, I'm, you know, been doing this for quite a long time. So I taught elementary for 12 years and then I've been in high school for the rest of that time. So that's that's fun. I love that. And a few years ago, God called me to adopt. I love it. Well, we're going to talk about all of those things a little more. <laughs> Rhonda, do you want to tell people, like, how do we know each other? Okay, so we know each <laughs> other from Two Rivers. We do. I'm yep. church. And um, so I came with my friend Kim. Yes. And you were friends with Kim, and you came and talked to her, and you said hi to me and invited me that day to join... The small group you guys were starting and <laughs> that my daughter could do babysitting. And it was just like a dream come true because we had been wanting to get involved. And we just yeah. had been there maybe two or three. Maybe this was the first Sunday. I don't even know. It was very early it in the early. whole thing. Yeah. It was very early. And it just was like a huge confirmation because Kaylee wanted to do babysitting yeah. and, and help with small groups. and um, And then I was like... Sure, this is great, and it was oh, it was such a special group. It was, it was such a, very a special, special group. group, such a special time. And well, I'm really glad you're here to tell your story. So we're gonna jump in, Rhonda. But <laughs> so I actually remember my first memory of you was actually sitting in the old youth room that's at the building. Right. We met. Right. I think that's actually the that first is, time right. we met. You're right, I forgot about um, that because it literally though I think it was like your first or second Sunday. They were doing something. Our youth pastor was yep. Brandon. He's actually been on the show. He was back a couple episodes. Yep. Um, he was doing something for all the parents, and we were sitting at the same table. That's right. And we just somehow, I don't even know how the adoption thing came up, but literally that, and I was it like, did. oh That's wait, right. we have to, we have to talk because with our story of adoption and then you sharing that, I was like, okay, Rhonda and I are going to be friends. I want to hear your story. <laughs> and then you did, you told me part of your story and this was all, what, this had to be like two or three years ago or long? Yeah. When? It's probably three years ago, probably. Okay. In November. See, yeah. Right, Cause we time. did, we, that's right. We did come in November and 
we came to church and they said, next week we're going to have a breakfast, parent breakfast yes. for the new youth pastor. And I was like, I'm going to that. Yeah. And just to see, yeah. you know, and caught the vision and it was so great. And we did sit at that table together. I remember that and talked was, about adoption. And it was crazy. It was the yeah, start great. of a good friendship. It was. And so I want you to share. So Rhonda was supposed to be on here back in November when it was National. <laughs> Orphan Adoption Awareness Month. We wanted right. to share her and Kaylee's story back then, but then our family got COVID and it just all went down. And then very my quickly. daughter got quarantined. <laughs> it just it got a little crazy. <laughs> so here we are at the end of December and we're going to get to tell the story because you we you kind of tried to back out on me, I think a couple of times, Rhonda, and I was like, <laughs> nope, we're going to tell the story. I want to do this. It's so great. So Rhonda, why don't you just jump in wherever okay. you want to start with kind of telling us the story that led to... Adoption of your daughter. Okay, well, it's it's a it's a long sorted past, but I I will tell you. So, um, I think I think the best place to start is just how I was raised. You know, I was raised yeah. in a Christian home. My mom and dad. My dad was pastor. Mom was like the perfect pastor's wife, mm-hmm. kind of like the one we have is just exactly like that. And um, anyway, so uh, I I just always wanted to be a mom. In fact, um. In high school, I was trying to decide, do I want to be a music teacher? Do I want to be a psychologist? Mm. I was trying to between those two because I love like, talking to people and helping yeah. with their problems. Yeah. And um, and it was like God just kept directing me towards music. And I realized in music, I could be a mom and I could mm. stay home with my kids and then go to school when they go to school. I mean, you know, when you're in high school and you have all these plans and you've got your life planned out and you what? think it's going to go that way. <laughs> That's so funny. Anyway, <laughs> it, 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 anyway, you think you know so much you then. Do, and then you, you just think you do. So I, I, I am. I really felt like God called me to be a music teacher, and I uh, jumped in learning that. I um, went to Christian college, and then from there on to secular college, and I ended up marrying my high school sweetheart who right. said he would be a pastor, and he was a youth pastor, and um, our marriage lasted a year and a half, and um, that ended tragically and with a lot of heartbreak on my end, mm-hmm. and um, I felt like I would never be a mother. I would never have ministry. I kind of felt I bought the lie that well you're divorced now so you can't do anything for God you know you can tithe but that's all mm. uh, you know <laughs> you can't teach Sunday school because <laughs> you're you're um disqualified mm. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it really that's kind of how I felt and I I there was so much shame and God was so good and he met me in that place and he he gave me Isaiah 54 which says, seeing, O barren woman, you who never bore a child, burst into song and shout for joy, for you who were never in labor, it's more of the children of the desolate woman than of her who mm-hmm. has a husband. And I was like, I knew with all my heart that was my verse. And it goes on, it says, you will forget the shame of your youth and remember no more the reproach of your widowhood. I will call you back as if you're a wife, deserted and distressed in spirit, a wife who married young, only to be rejected. And I was like, whoa, that's what I did. I married young. I was 21 when I got married. I'm 23 when I got divorced. And what is this? Um, yeah. um, and I only ever dated one person, you know? Right. <laughs> so right. I was very, and, and I mean, followed all the rules, the Christian rules, if you know what I'm saying. So, yeah. um, and so uh, I I believed that and that gave me comfort. But as time went on, I felt like I needed to, to take things into my own hands because God's timing wasn't very fast. <laughs> And you know the biological clock is ticking, wow. and <laughs> and so um, a couple of years later, I met a guy that I went to high school with, and <clears throat> and we were friends, and our friendship grew, and and two years later, so four years after the first divorce, I married him, and um, I don't, I, there were a lot of things that he was like, you don't have to just tithe, you God can use you, you know, he's very. There were some things about that that was very that were very, I don't know, you know, attractive and yeah. encouraging and like, oh, really? You think that? And wow, okay. And so, um, so that I remember nobody liked him. Oh no, in my family okay. and my friends were like, you could do better. And I was like, 
Ouch. But I, you know, there's a whole story in that as well, but I don't want to go into all that, but there's a story there. Okay. <laughs> Maybe another day and another year, <laughs> another, another lifetime. Another time. <laughs> but I really, like, I, I believe, I believe that God told me no, okay. but I was like, it's going to be okay. And I, as I look back now, I feel like I did that because I was trying to cover up the shame. I wasn't trusting what he said in his word that he would take care of the shame. Yeah. And the fact that I can talk about this right now means he has taken care of the shame. Yeah. And yeah. I'm not like a puddle or is living in condemnation. I'm not. And okay. and just actually just to be able to talk, well, it's like it's something that happened. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it just happened and whatever. Anyway, yeah. that marriage was very, um, very difficult. And um, it was... N- from the first day on, there was a lot of anger and a lot of negativity that was there, and it was it was very hard. And I was trying to hold the marriage together, and yeah. blah blah blah. And in, I mean, I was trying to hold it together with all kinds of things. But um, I even said, "What if we just had a kid?" And which is like craziness, you know. And and thankfully, he didn't hmm. bite on that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so um, now, by the time I'm thirty four. Okay. I'm twice divorced. Okay. <laughs> in from raised in this very Christian home and I'm like, "Oh my gosh, you know, my that my time is running out." Hmm. You know, but um to be honest with you, I know it sounds c- kind of counterintuitive, but I I felt like I didn't ever feel like I needed to have a child from my own body. Yeah. yeah. Like I don't I know a lot of women struggle with infertility and my heart breaks for them because they want right. that so bad. Yes. But that has never been something that's been a huge desire. I just want to be a mother. Right. Like okay. so so even in my all like my whole marriages, I was yeah. like adoption is definitely not a po- not a out in yeah, my mind. You, yeah. So to consider. So I would I mean I would you know, I wouldn't mind having a child from my own body, but right, you know, if right. that didn't work out, I would not have a problem. Like I, it was like not a, an issue yeah, of yeah, like that. that makes... I, I would need to grieve. Just right. that's just, I don't know. Maybe it was a gift God gave me. Yeah. I don't know because there are a lot of things that I did grieve, but <laughs> and sometimes we just can't take it all. Yeah. Um. And so God just gives us a, gr- a break on something. So I, I feel like that was that was there. But anyway, so I I go through the second divorce and. You know, God is so good and he just gives me gives me scripture and I won't quote it all like this like the last time, but Psalm 103 really became really powerful about, you know, he heals all your diseases because mm. that's you know, I was having a lot of stress induced things like eczema and Aww. stomach issues yeah. and you know, lots of lots of stuff. So gallbladder, you know, they were oh, like, wow. Oh, you should take your gallbladder out. And I'm like, I really don't oh. think that's the problem. I don't know. Right. <laughs> I think it's him. <laughs> but anyway, but um I feel like God rescued me from that from that relationship. So that divorce happened in two thousand two. Okay. Or three. I don't know. I've uh, I forgot. It's all right. It doesn't matter because it doesn't matter. <laughs> okay. No, it's so you're thirty four years old by this point is what you said. So I'm thirty four okay. when I go through at thir- in two thousand three. That is okay. right. I'm through. So I just kind of plug along and and I'm like I I remember just often asking God, God, when are you gonna let me meet somebody? Like I need to start my ministry. Hmm. Like I just felt like I couldn't be a minister for God without being married. I couldn't do whatever God had for me to do. I feel like there was something missing. Yeah. And I had to have that piece so that I could do the next piece. Okay. And he uh, very, very graciously, 10 years later, in 2013, I just remember very strongly remembering him saying, I have given you all things for life and godliness. Hmm. Just the scripture, um, it's, I think it's Second Peter 1, 3. Okay. It's like, okay. I've given you all things for life and godliness. And I was like, all things for life that means I have everything I need for ministry. And it was like a light bulb. Like I know mm. it seems so dumb for some people, but it really was a huge epiphany for me because I had believed a lie yeah. from years that I needed this mm. in my life. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. So, <laughs> so 
that, it just like took this weight off. And then suddenly I didn't have to be wondering, well, if I go to this place and I, with these friends, maybe I'll meet him or maybe mm. I go here. And all that stopped. Yeah. Like it just, yeah. I, I didn't need it anymore. I was like, who cares? Right. If it happens, it happens. That's a, that's a good, yeah. <laughs> and, and so I have, there were two really dear friends, Michelle and Stacy. We're still good friends to this day. But v- Michelle and her husband were pursuing adoption of a sibling group through okay. foster care. Okay. And Stacy and her husband had four children already, but they were wanting to foster. Okay. At that time. So, and I was like, I want to do it too. And we were meeting like every couple of weeks and praying yeah. together and sharing what God's doing, kind of accountability right. and, as well as just encouraging one another and just, it's just a, a very precious time. And I'm like, I want to do it too. And I'm like, they're like, well, you can. I'm like, no, I can't. I'm not married. They're like, well, why not? And I'm like, I have all things for life and godliness. <laughs> You're like, why? I don't know. Why not? <laughs> and I was like, they're like, why not? And I, and I, for the first time, I allowed mm-hmm. myself to go there and to think, you know, because I do believe so strongly that a child needs a mother and a father. And mm-hmm. I I am not of that mindset, I can do anything, I don't need a man, you know. I, I am not that kind of person. Right. And I didn't want to be perceived that way. Yeah. And it was like it didn't matter because I, I, I don't know, God was just like, I have given you everything you need hmm. for everything I call you to do. Yeah, absolutely. So if I call you to this... You can do it. And so yes. over we, there was a, a couple a lady from One Heart Family Ministries, Emily in the yeah. house, came to our church and the church I was at before I yeah. met you. Yeah. And um she was gonna be giving a talk about foster and adoption. And mm. I was like, I, they're like Michelle's like, Are you going to that meeting? And I'm like, Yeah, I was thinking about it, but I don't know. And <laughs> I, I think I've got to teach that day. I'll just, you know, I'll just whatever. And I, I she's like, Okay, well, hopefully I'll see you there. And I was like, Okay. And I was like, Okay, well, if I don't have to teach, I'll go. Well, then I thought I had to teach that because it was like a month, I was on a month rotation. Okay, okay. I didn't have to teach. I'm like, <laughs> Okay, well, if I wake up, I mean, I was like, <laughs> yeah, trying to give all these you know, outs, right? I was, yes. I really was. And I went there and it was like, I just sat there and wept and I was like, I have to do this. Hmm. I know that I have to do this. It yeah. was, it wasn't, it was a call and it was a, a desire and a strong, like, you just can't deny it. Like, yeah. Yeah. if I don't do this, I'm disobeying God. Hmm. Like, yeah. And so I was like, okay, well, I need to, you know, Run this through my my uh, respected advisors. Okay. <laughs> so my I was like, uh, you know, <laughs> you know, you just got to have those. And so I would, I talked to a couple of people, and I was like, okay, I want to make sure I talk to the pastor and the elders of our church. And you know, I know that a child needs a father figure, and you know, and I'm I want to make sure that there's going to be support. And they were yeah. like, they 100 percent were like. Go for it. I'm like, really? <laughs> I keep thinking they're going to say no. Like, right, and like, right. Really? And then I was like, talk to my parents, which, you know, they have they have been such a support um, through so many things. And um, I just, I there's a story there, but I of redemption that God gave us. But hmm. God just, He just opened the door. So they came up to see me, and this was in March of 2013, and they always go to a choir concert, one of my choir concerts. Every year, they go to at least one, and (laughs) that was the one they were going to go to was in March. And so they came to my house after the concert, because we kind of had this thing where they show up the day of the concert and at the concert, so I don't have to be all nervous. And you know, we we, then then we come home and we can relax and we get more time and I'm not... Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, all yeah. that. So, so they with their visiting, and I was like, I've got to, I've got to talk to him. And they were just talking so excited about my cousin, like it's a second cousin. Um, and they had visited my dad's aunt, and they she just was going on and on and on about these kids that his cousin and his wife had adopted from Ethiopia. Okay, okay, <laughs> and how amazing it was, and all the pictures, and they were just like, this is the most exciting thing Aww. and the most wonderful thing. And I was like, um. I need to talk to you guys. <laughs> yeah, and I asked. I asked them. I said, "I I just like your blessing." And and they're like, "We give our blessing." And when we, you know, when God says, 
go, we say yes, and we say yes to your will, Lord. And wow. And my yeah. mom too. My mom is a little more hesitant, I think, because she knows what it's like to be a mom. <laughs> 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 and knew that I would be doing it by myself. But right. she was supportive. She was 100% on board as well. She okay. just was like, I want you to make sure you're sure. You yeah. know, you yeah. Know. And I, I get that. And so she, she, she's been the best. So I started the classes with okay. Emily. Okay. At, well, at One Heart Family Ministries, which shout out to them. They're amazing. And um, there was an. There was another single mom in the group, and okay. uh, we kind of got to. Well, there were t- three of us, and uh, but the, these two of us have become pretty. We've stayed friends, and That's great. Um, anyway, so long story longer. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you're, you're, you're doing good. Um, I w- took the classes. I was certified. I got all the stuff. I got, and I started getting emails from our parent kids, and and I kind of in my mind was like, I, I and, and my caseworker was so good. She she was like, I don't want a little kid. Like, mm. I don't want to deal with potty training. And, yeah, yeah. You know, I feel like they need to go to school. I need to go to school because I, I, you know, she knew my job and the stress of it and yeah. the um, thing. So here's a here's a, a side note. You know, when you go to the foster and adoptive classes, they ask you, do you want to foster or do you want to adopt? Yes. And I I thought I think I want to adopt and and um and so. I don't think I want to foster, and but then it was cl- made very clear because in the classes, a foster mom has if you're going to be a foster, even foster to adopt or whatever, yeah, just foster anybody that come along. You have to be available at a moment's notice. Yes, they, you drop everything and then you have you get the kid or kids, and then you take them immediately to the doctor the next day, right. and then you take them to their psychologist appointments, and then you take them to all these places, and you have to buy buy food, and you have to buy yeah. clothes, and you have to just yeah. have all this on hand and just not drop a lot of time everything in a minute, yeah. whereas yeah. with adoption, you will have a little time yes. to say, okay, and then you can say at a date, this is a good date, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So I knew with my job and the performances and the competitions and yeah. all stuff that I have going on, it would probably be best to do a adoption, but that's what I wanted anyway, so it worked out great. Okay. So um, that was just like, okay, that's a confirmation. And then and then international or domestic. Yeah, and yeah. I was like, I have no savings. Well, we're going to go <laughs> domestic. Right, you right, know, right. It was just kind there's of a lot like, of choices it was, when you... it, there are so many choices and all the choices are good choices. Yes. And they're, yep. they're, but I just felt like God was calling me and he was going to provide. Yep. And these were the ways yeah. he did for me and my story. So, um, so I'm great with all kinds. Yeah. I think it's I think it's a beautiful thing. We've talked so. about that a lot on the podcast when we were in November month, just saying yeah. like God call everybody's story is different. And there's no right or wrong way Absolutely. for adoption or fostering and however families come together is the way that it was supposed to be. And so there's it is and God has to lead you some right. He's leading you on a journey and a path to find yeah. your child. So yeah. so okay, so it was through so, so domestic adoption, you had to take all the classes. Foster care, yeah. Okay, and, okay. And, and get all the certifications, and they come and they look over your finances, and they ask, interview your friends, and it's very invasive, come through your house. Right? Yeah, oh, yes. yes. <laughs> There's nothing hidden. They come through your house, and they tell you, you don't have enough GFI outlets. <laughs> I'm like, Okay. Yeah. How scary that? are those home visits? You're like under a microscope, like, are they going to Is it me? always this clean? Yeah. Well, I'd like it to be. <laughs> in, th- in theory, yes. <laughs> oh. You know, it was, yeah. So how long about, Rhonda, was that process going through all the certification it, and the home about, study? With the classes and the home study, it took about six months. Okay. Okay. Uh, maybe a little less. Um, and then it was just wait for a kid and you yeah. would get emails. It's kind of like online dating, kind of. <laughs> Terrible, terrible to say, but you get these profiles yes, and you yeah. look at on a picture and you're like, well, could I live with this kid yeah. based on a paragraph? Right. You know, and how does anybody know? <laughs> That's hard. Exactly. And so in my caseworker, I would say, what do you think about this little boy? And she's like, Rhonda, that's going to be a, that's going to be a two parent family. Okay. That's just too much. Okay. There's too much. Well, what about these two little sisters? Rhonda, you do not need siblings. I'm like, oh, I want, I don't want the kid to be by themselves. And that would be so hard. <laughs> and, and I mean, she would just, she really knew me more than I knew yeah. because she knew what was out there and right. what all that entailed. Right. She knew what was best. And it was really, really good. And then, you know, well, that's going to be a medical needs. And with your job, that's not going to work. Okay. And, you know, all these things. And I, and I waited for two years. Wow. Almost two years. Okay. So by okay. the time I got Kaylee, it was exactly two years. Wow. That's a, 
That's a long time. It was a long time, especially when you are that old. <laughs> When you're that old. Well, tell me, okay, let's talk about that just for a second. The waiting, there's a waiting process in the adoption, fostering, no matter how long, whichever avenue mm-hmm. you go, there is just time, whether it's even just the time for the classes. What did you learn? What was going on during the waiting time? I always want to ask because it's huge. I mean, in two it years, is, is in some ways, it doesn't seem like a long time, but when you're in it, it's excruciating. It's, it, was, it was a long time. And I was like, it is really, you know, like, okay, God. I, I heard you. What's going on? You know, <laughs> yeah. what's going yeah. on? How long do I have to wait? And like, I was kind of getting to the point where, like, you know, just That's like, a, did I did I hear you? Yes. You know, I think I did. And I really, and and my caseworker was so great because she was like, Rhonda, it, it's going to happen. Yeah. It's going to happen. Don't worry. It's going to yeah. happen. And I would be like, well, what if I need to go this way? Because I kind of had like a four to nine years old. Okay. So, um, like. After they're nine, I, I you know have some friends that like had older kids and I, that wasn't a good experience, and I was like, well, let's just do that. Let's just do nine. Yeah. You know? And um and so you get I I would get emails from her, but okay. then you also get put in these databases all over. Yeah. Yeah. And okay. um, I got, and then also through one heart, I would get kids and anyway yeah. there's all these places and you would just look through them and look through them and and pray and what do I what Lord what and this little girl Kaylee came up and in November of 2014 okay and um I I saw her and I was like hmm and it said that she is 11 okay and I was like oh that's little oh it's little she does well in school. She gets along well with her peers, makes A's and B's in school, gets along with well with her peers and her teachers, wants to mm. please them. I was like, ooh, that's a plus. <laughs> um, wants to be involved in every club and every activity. Aw. I was like, my yeah. heart. And she loves to listen to K-Love. <laughs> My heart music. And she sings alone, or she sings solos and with her friends at church. <laughs> I was like, okay. You're like, this is. I closed the computer and I was like, huh. And I just walked away. <laughs> you walked away. <laughs> and I just kind of went what to do the I other do room now? and I was like, huh. <laughs> okay, let's just don't rush. Let's just, tomorrow, if you still think about her, email, email Kat Christy. And yeah. I was like, my caseworker. And so I emailed her and I said, Christy, what do you think about this one? She goes, oh. I think this could be a good fit. Well, she never <laughs> said that. Everything was no this, no that, no this. Oh, wow. I'm like, she goes, but I didn't have her on my radar because she was so old. And I said, I know, but I think she might fit. And she goes, I think she might fit too. And I'm like, wow. Okay, okay. <laughs> so I said, well, if you think so, then let's let's get the long profile. So the long profile, so you had that paragraph. Yeah. The long profile kind of tells a little bit of her life story okay. in about... Two pages. Okay. Okay. Wow. <laughs> so that's what you get. Yeah. Maybe yeah. three. And so in that profile, I see that, you know, she has a biological sister. They've been separated. Hmm. She has um, lived in lots of different homes. She has had um, more of her little, like, little issues, which I don't want to yeah. disrespect no, no, yeah, her. But wanna, yeah. um, I, I have peace. Hmm. I was like, okay, yeah, those are issues, but I have peace. Yeah. I was like... Okay, let's pursue it. So, so what happens next is they set up a staffing. Okay, which a staffing is when you sit in a room with about ten other people. You have my caseworker, okay. her caseworker, the guardian ad litem, which is the the lawyer okay. that is appointed to a, a wow. represent the child. Okay, who may not know doesn't know the child, but yeah. is there to represent. As okay. a legal whatever, and then you have you also have the juvenile officer. Wow! And you have the foster parents. Then you have some community members. Wow! And I don't know. There's there were like eleven people around the table. So Rhonda, remind me real quick. So there's a because di- every adoption thing is so different. So let's just clarify for so 
we're talking again, domestic adoption through the foster care system. Yes. But you were talking about, you you had specifically said you were looking for children that were completely eligible for yes. adoption, right? Okay. So yes. there's two different tracks yes. that can happen because not every child in the foster care system is eligible for adoption. Yes. Some of them right. just need some temporary care while parents or guardians are getting some work done or whatever, <laughs> working right. on themselves. And then hopefully the goal is reunification with their family. Right. And then there's also children in the foster care system that for whatever I mean, there's hundreds of reasons as to why they are needing permanent guardianship and needing to be adopted, right? Okay, exactly. So, you were- so exactly. I'm glad you said that. So like my friends, Michelle, they adopted the three boys. Yeah. The boys they adopted, they fostered them to adopt. Okay. But it wasn't quite settled if they were eligible for okay. adoption and we had to- Okay. We had to pray through that, and then and you're, you're like you want them to be with their moms, yeah. And it's a hard, a it's hard, so hard. It, yeah. There's so many heartbreaking parts about it. Yes, but um, and hundreds of stories as to why right. kids are in. It, there's right. no one cookie cutter shape, and yes, it can yes. be very very different. But I just so want to make Kaylee's sure people case, listening. She was fully. Yeah, I'm sorry. No, that's okay. Uh, she was fully eligible for adoption, okay. which means her parents had terminated their rights, both okay. of them. Okay, and so. Um, Anyway, so so there was nobody that was going to come out of the woodwork, right? Right. And, okay. And say that's my kid, right? Or whatever. Okay. And it was it was a subtle thing, which gave me a lot of peace as well, too. Yeah. Um, well, that's but that doesn't always happen that right. way. There's a lot of <gasps> question yeah. marks for a lot of people. Absolutely. For a lot of for that. But so anyway, so I thought for so the staffing was scheduled for the end of was scheduled for the end of February. Okay. And and it had to be in her town, which was across the state. And so I drove over there, and it was snowing that day. <laughs> and my mom, they live in Arkansas, right up right below there. So my mom okay. and dad were going to come up and pray because they like to. We're a praying family. Like yeah. they're like, we're going to sit in the parking lot and pray. And I'm like, okay. Aww. So my dad got sick and he couldn't come, but my mom came and she sat in the parking lot and prayed. Okay, while I wow. was in this staffing. And you know when you go to an interview and you're like, I got the job. I know I got the job. Like you just make this connection with everybody. And, yeah. and I, I'm sitting there in the staffing and I'm looking at, they've given me more pictures of her besides mm-hmm. what I've seen on the internet. Because I was like yeah. seeing like two p- pictures. Wow. And I and there's a picture in her basketball uniform and, and all. And I'm like, this is my baby. And I'm just kind of petting Aww. it. Like I'm so happy. I'm like, yeah. oh, like, oh, Lord, please, Lord, please. And so I, I just feel so peaceful and confident. And because it was snowing, I said, I probably ought to go home instead of, because I was going to stay with my parents and for the weekend, but I was like, I don't want to get stuck there. Yeah. So it took me seven hours to get home instead of oh, four wow. and it snowed. And on the way home, they called and they said, Rhonda, we think you're going to be a great mom, but not to Kaylee. Oh my. <laughs> and I'm like, Rhonda, wh- <laughs> what? What? <laughs> This is when we need the dramatic music. Well, can you add in that like do do do? Like it needs a little dun dun dun. Oh. Yeah. Um, and so I'm just like, it was really a very existential moment. Like, I bet. why, God, are you mm. there? Did I hear you? I thought yeah. I heard you. Yeah. Like I have never, even with my two divorces, which I was very devastated. I've never felt that low. Like I just, I just felt so low. Like yeah. I went, I got home finally after seven hours, and I just curled on the couch with my cat, and I stayed there throughout the whole weekend. Wow! And yeah. um, I think I, went, I, I got up and went to church Sunday just because I needed to do that. But other than that, I was on the couch and mm. and. Um, my caseworker said, Rhonda, sometimes these things fall through. I, just, I don't want to give you false hope, but just sometimes they fall through, and I'm like. Did they give any okay. reason as to why? Yeah, at that? Um, the other couple that they chose lived in the area. Okay, so there was another family close okay. by, so she could keep all her counselors and her doctors and yeah. that. And it was a two parent home, which Kaylee had requested that she wanted okay. a mom and a dad. Okay, um, and so that's that's what happened. So. And and my caseworker's like, I'm gonna find out what's going on. This is it. Oh no. <laughs> so she yeah. found out, she found out that was the reason. And I'm like, okay. I'm like, I, I okay, God, what I don't know what to do. What do you yeah. what are you telling me? So I I mean, I'm really like, I thought I heard you. Like that was the hardest part. Like, 
I losing her, but also like losing like this connection with God. Yeah. That I really felt like I he was talking to me. And so it was kind of like I was in the grave. And so on Monday, I get a call from Joe. Hey, Rhonda, this is Joe. And I'm like, Joe, who's Joe? Well, Joe was her foster dad. He said, I just want you to know you're gonna get a call tomorrow that Kaylee is yours. Oh my. And I'm like, who are you again? <laughs> and we talked for a minute, and I'm like, is this okay? So I call my caseworker. I'm like, is this protocol? And they're like, no, <laughs> they're not supposed to do that. Oh, wow. And so, <laughs> but he had asked, I guess he had asked the, her, their caseworker for my number or whatever. Okay. I don't know how he got it, but he, but anyway, he had permission to call me. Wow. But um, the next day, which was my birthday, <laughs> My forty well. sixth birthday, <laughs> they called and said, "You're a mom." Wow! And I was so excited. Well, then Joe, well, Joe's a little pushy. I love you, Joe. I, you know, you are. And <laughs> and I said, he said, "Do you want to talk to her? Do you want to talk to her right now?" And I said, "You know, no, I don't. I want to wait. Yeah, until I read her case file. Yeah, because I wanted to know everything. Yeah. So until you get to that place where you are the chosen family, then you get to read her entire case file. Okay. Up to this point, I've just had the three pages. Right. Wow. So, um. I said, okay, I'm going to take the day off tomorrow. I'm going to run to your town, and I'm going to read the case file. And if I still feel good about it, then I will contact her. But I do not want to contact her and say, yeah, I, I'm, I think I'm going to adopt you. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And and because because when that happened, that was her fourth failed adoption. Oh, my goodness. Where people had said, oh, oh yeah, we're going to adopt you. And then for and then whatever it, reason... Sometimes they change their mind. Sometimes the oh. state intervened. It, it was been. It's been a horrible. Like that's wow. that just breaks my heart for her. Yeah. So I did not want to be another one in a long list right, for her. So, right. um, so I drove to the town and I went into the little office and they put me in a little room and gave me four stacks of files that were about I don't know what do you say five wow. inches five in- yeah <laughs> wow thick and poor sweet and wow. and. It, and I mean, a lot of it is repetition, and a lot of it's legalese. So I, yeah. I kind of got the hang of flipping through yeah. until I could kind of see. But there are things I learned there that have helped me and helped walk her through things. Okay, you know, uh, one thing that just gave me so much joy is that she um, she would sing the B I B L E and this little light of mine and Jesus loves me. They would write down the name of the song or the or the lyrics to the song, like when she had her supervised visits with her mom. Wow! And so I was so happy about that. Like that yeah. that was a blessing. So, um, I get to the end of the last one. I'm like, I have, I have peace. Okay. What is that? <laughs> I have peace. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. So I called Joe and I said, Hey, um, is is it okay if I meet her? And they said, yeah, we're having church tonight, and we we can meet up at the church. They're going to have a dinner, like they have Wednesday night supper before the youth group yeah, or whatever, yeah. and you can join us there. And I said, well, it'll probably just be about an hour because I need to get home, right. and I, it's a four-hour drive. So I drove up there, and we just looked at each other, and it was like... Wow. I'm your mom, and she was so shy, and I was so sh- I was so shy, and and Joe's like, you guys are just taking each other in. I'm like, I know it's so great, wow. And so, um, then we had a, so then we had to plan when we would have the exchanging of everything. Yeah, okay. and um, so and um, so we arranged a weekend visit in Kansas City because it was halfway, or not halfway, but it's closer to them. Okay, but. I just said, let's. Just, I decided we can take a weekend off, yeah. go, go see her. We w- got a hotel with a pool, which the pool was getting renovated, of course. But whatever. <laughs> and we just had a really good weekend together at the hotel, and then the next two. Okay, so the the Saturday after I met her, I had solo and ensemble competition. Oh wow! Okay, so that was a big all day yeah. event for school, and then the next Saturday we met in Kansas City, and then. The next Tuesday, we um, 
she moved in. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so okay. I drove up to Kansas City and met them and got her and put all her worldly belongings in my car. And Wow. And so she was 11, home. still at this time, 11? She was 11. Okay. And how long had she been in the foster care system um, at that point? Do you- she, she was in off and on as a... T- Little kid, like toddler, mm-hmm. three, four, okay. but then kind of after five years old on. Okay. Um, okay. There, then there were some visits, and and sometimes she had home visits with her mom, but it was pretty much foster care on from there. Okay. Wow. So she she lived in about six years. Okay. And um, it's a so, long time. Yeah. And so then just walk us through. So she came home then with you, but then it took a little bit, right, for the adoption to actually be finalized. Yes. When was that? So, um. Just some advice that I was given, and I think it was really wise, is, you know, a lot of times people have like a big party and welcome everybody, yeah. but I was advised, um, just you two, yeah, bring it in. And yeah. so I took my maternity leave okay. from school, yeah. Yeah. And, um, I, and because she was older and she was going to go to school, I needed her to go to school, we, I just took two weeks off, and then we had spring break in there, okay. so it ended up being three weeks. Okay. And I that the last week, she went back to school, but I stayed home and just finished taking care of stuff and then went to school the next week. So that that was really good, and, and people brought us meals, and mm-hmm. that was so helpful. I mean, you would think, I have an 11-year-old, you can do this on your own, but there were so many emotional, yeah. traumatic breakdown moments on Absolutely. all or both of like right. her part and just trying to navigate how to be a family. Both we just completely. needed that yeah. extra. So if you are ever wanting to help foster families or yes. adoptive families, this is a great way to Meals. help them. Yeah. Like it was really, really helpful. Yeah. And um my my school had a gift card shower for us. Aww. My friends gave me a kid shower. It was precious. That's- so I, we got games and we got Gift cards, and we got a you know uh, memberships to different things to Six Flags. And, oh wow! You know different things that people did for us that yeah. we could do together, and and it was just really important that we just so the shower and all that stuff was before she came. Okay, but then I was able to pull out. Hey, here's a present. <laughs> you know, That's, and yeah. and here and there all all through. So instead of a million people and. Uh, yeah, people. that would be you know, over. It was it, it was a little bit overwhelming. So so even even every single time I go to Walmart, I always see former students. She's like, "Mom, you know everybody." <laughs> <laughs> that's probably true. I, <laughs> I do know a lot of people, but um, anyway, well, that's been that's been good. So yeah, that so so she came in, and then the state of Missouri, you have to live together for six months before your adoption can okay. be final. You can okay. apply for adoption. So. We're we're living together, so every month a caseworker comes mm-hmm. and visits from the other side of the state, oh, all wow. the way and visit over us over here, and um, just to make sure, yeah, that just check on everything. Everything and- is going okay, and talks yeah. to her. I really didn't pull her aside privately, and she, I mean, she asked her if she wanted to, but she was fine. She's like, no, I'm fine. Okay. So, um, and then so officially, then, so if so. In October, I could a file for a date, and then that was set for the weekend of Thanksgiving, and we we went back over across the state and had our adoption day, and that was a hard day for her. Hmm. She, we got to go to her favorite restaurant in her town, hmm. and um, she showed us all around. But yeah. as we got closer and closer to the the time of the court date, she's like, "My tummy hurts," you oh, know. Yeah, and I'm like, "It's okay. I'm gonna adopt you. Yeah, I'm gonna adopt you because I feel like, and and really, there's a lot of trauma in between. Up until that point, there was a lot of triggering situations. Okay, um, and and there was a, it was very rocky. Okay, but throughout that whole time, I'm like, I know that I know she's my daughter. Right. Like, I, right. You know. You know. Yeah. You do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it's not. It's not gonna change. There's yeah. nothing that's gonna change this. Yeah. And you know, it can get crazy, but it's not gonna change. Right. And, but that had that had to, that trust had to be built because those other people who had said that yeah. and then that didn't that happen. Doubt. So I feel like once the adoption was final, that that caused a little bit more settling mm-hmm. into I the bet. foundation of her life. Yeah. And then over the course of time as more stuff happened, it it happened. So Okay, so, so that's been five years in a five years. So adoption. She came March 2015 and we adopted um 
November 17th, 2015. That's amazing. Tell me, just give us a little bit how, I mean, five, five and a half, six years. I mean, <laughs> Kaylee's not, she's a senior. She is a senior. How, how's being a mom? How, I, I mean, love being a mom. I, yeah. I, I never thought I'd be a mom of, a, of an only child, but that's good. I'm good with one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she is always asking me, Mom, can you get more kids? <laughs> You're like, no, I think we're, I think we're good. I think we're fine. Oh. Anyway, so yeah, it's great. Um, it has, we have had our times of ups and downs, but she is, she is delightful. I thought from the moment I, I met her, from yeah. the moment I saw her picture, that is the word for her. She's mm. just delightful. She's so fun and she's always thinking and she's always coming up with all these ideas. And I'm like, Okay. That's awesome. <laughs> and uh, and definitely has an opinion on everything. <laughs> <laughs> I've met Kaylee, and delightful is a great word for it her. Is. She, she really, really is. is such a sweet, special girl. And yes. it's so cool how God brought your guys' family together. Yeah. Yeah. So, Rhonda, if there's somebody listening who's like, hey, I'm kind of thinking about this, I'm considering this, do you have any just advice or words of encouragement that you would just give somebody who's maybe on the fence or not sure if God's calling them to it, what would you say or encourage them to do? Well, I mean, I mean, I was kind of like, really? <laughs> oh, okay. Really? Yeah. Okay. Because it was such a desire of my heart to be a mom. Hmm. And this is not the way I had pictured hmm. or what I've chosen for myself. Yeah. yeah. But it is God's way and it is a good way. Hmm. It's very good. Mm-hmm. And um, so I would say talk to people. Yeah. Talk to lots of people who have adopted and 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 hear hear the real day to day stories. Like yeah. it is not easy, right. and there have been some seasons that have been very very difficult. But it is so worth it. Mm. It is so worth it. And I would I would say a couple of things. Number one, you can't do it to fill something in you. Mm. You have to do it from a filled up place. Yeah. Because if you're doing it because like, well, I I need to pour into somebody or something Mm. like that, Uh, anything about you, it's going to backfire and be bad. Mm -hmm. Like you have Mm -hmm. to, you have to not need, I don't know, does that make sense? Like when, when the child, whoever is going through their own trauma, it's so easy for me to make it about me. Okay. Does that yeah, like that, it, yeah. like that or they're pushing buttons and they're pushing my buttons. Right. right. And I have to realize that's about them and yes. and if I'm in a place where I'm not filled up with the Lord and confident yeah. in what he's called me to do, I will easily go down that path of this this is about me and and yes god uses everything to grow me mm-hmm. and he's he is doing that but so it's just i don't know I'm, i don't think i'm saying it right but no that <laughs> can you help me say it i think you're i think i'm <laughs> understanding you it, kids from hard places have so much and sometimes when you're going at any any time even if you're in your mar- it could just be biological kids if you think yes. that a child or somebody is going to fix it's kind of like the example <laughs> that you gave while you were married earlier and you mm-hmm. said well maybe we could just have a kid and that that is not necessarily <laughs> no, the, the fix not it of things no, and so you not. need to just be in a very and let's be honest no one is ever fully prepared to be a par- there's nothing no, that really prepares no. you for it until you <laughs> are in the middle of it but you want to make sure you're going into right. all of it for right. as much of the right reasons as you can or not just, hey, I'm going to go save a child or I'm going to do any of those things because right. as you could tell or I could tell or other people that we've known that, if I, it's really almost the opposite. Like, yeah. I mean, I know with our story of Lincoln, it, it was not about us going to save a child. It was really about the work that God did in Will and I in our heart. Um, much, I mean, he's doing stuff in Lincoln's life for sure, but much more Absolutely. the other way around. 100%. 100%. What they wanted to show. Rhonda, yeah. I want to, you said something early on, and I just want to come back to this because I think so many people um, might have some of the same thinking patterns, or might not even realize it. You talked about while you were waiting to be a mom and thinking and really waiting for you to do 
quote unquote ministry or what God had for you, thinking that life had to look a certain way for you to do the things God called you to. And I just want to come back and talk about that because you you said that and you said it so, so well. Um, but I really want to come back and clarify again that it's like, hey, God is do he does not work in the same timing <laughs> or the space that we do. And sometimes our world or our circumstances lead us to believe certain things to be true that are not really true in God's economy. And the plan that he wants and the story that he's written in everybody's life, which you know we're huge about stories. All of our listeners know that's the whole reason we have this podcast is that God just is doing really extraordinary things in everyday moments. But sometimes we get so caught up. You talked about it's a lie. You got bought Mm -hmm. into a lie that Mm -hmm. you had to be married before you could do this, or you had to be married before you could even have kids. And yes, there's sometimes a right and way that we want to follow steps and God has a plan, but the plan for you was different and he wanted you to be a mom. And if you continue to have walked in that path, you could have missed out on so much of what God wanted to say. Can you, is there anything else you would like to say about that kind of time and what God has just done and really how he has just changed you a little bit or your perspective on all of that just now or what you would tell young Rhonda if you could go back and tell, you know, if somebody's listening now that's that like, hey, God can't use me or he can't use this part of my story or Mm -hmm. because I know you talked about the shame. I mean, there's several, Mm -hmm. I'm kind of crossing several things here, but whatever (laughs) sticks out to you, I hey, does that make sense? I think so. Um, Yeah, I feel like we, we just put him in a box, God in a box, and we're like, like like my little plan for my life mm-hmm. um, that I'll do this and then that and then this and then that and this yeah. will happen and then that'll happen and blah da da yeah <laughs> and life ever will be after. perfect yes yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and none of that has happened mm. but I wouldn't change any of it mm. like I really I have such a better understanding of God's grace mm. now yeah um, than I ever 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 did then. Uh, I don't know if I'm answering your question right, but no, I you're, you're doing I, great. I really feel like there's that there is a box that we put him in, and and even this this very day, just realizing some things. Oh, I was thinking it doesn't have to be what I think it has to be. Hmm. It could be bigger than that. Mm-hmm. And um, one of the things you know when we came to Two Rivers, the pastor kept saying, "There's more. There's more. God has more mm-hmm. for you." And I was like, "That's why we're here," you know. Yeah. And I I just feel like. Um, there is so much more. Yeah. And I I really thought it was going to look a certain way and and now I'm just like anything anything is possible. God is able to do abundantly above all the way I yes. think. Yes. Yeah. And um so when I was what I would tell my young self just don't close the doors hmm. to what God might do. Mhm. You know, let him lead and open the doors. Um, I don't know. Don't let fear keep you back. That's that's good. Because I think that I was afraid of being on my own, mm-hmm. and and I'm not on my own. I have him. Yeah, yeah. And that's good. He has given me a body of Christ around me. Yeah. Through my local church, but also through other believers all over to support me. And yeah. And I'm there to support them, and we are that whole community, you know, our own little committee communities. Like that is the, I don't know. That's God's the body of Christ. It's yeah. so beautiful. I I don't know if I'm answering your question. No, you are. You did. You did. Per- <laughs> that's exactly. You did. Per- there's no right or wrong answers, be, Rhonda. I can't be profound. And I, I love that know. you said there's more because that's the verse. It's. It has become one of my life verses. It's Ephesians 3.20 that mm-hmm. says, Now to him, which is God, now to him that can do immeasurably, exceedingly, abundantly, whichever version you're reading in the Bible, more than we could ever ask, hope, or imagine through his power within each of us. And yeah, it is great. There is always yeah. more. Whatever story he's writing, there's more to come when we just keep putting our faith, hope, and trust in him. And when I feel, when I feel depleted and mm-hmm. out... He has so much more for me, and yeah, um, and and I, I, it will never run out. Like I don't nope. have to think. Well, when I do this, that's all I got. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's Absolutely. just going to be more. It's just going to be more and more and more. And I'm just, I mean, yes, yeah. 
Well, I always love, like I said, hearing stories because even we talk about really hard things happen and there's hard things in your life and your story that I'm sure you'd be like, man, if I, if I could rewrite some of this or do it differently, maybe you would. But we said, God just has this crazy way of still using those things. And it might not have led you to your daughter. All of those things were steps along the way to get you to where you needed to be, even though they were hard. Um, And I love how God does that. That's why we love hearing hearing and sharing stories. So let me share a couple of little nuggets. Yeah, please that do. Are, I just have to talk about for a second. So I felt the call yeah. to adopt in 2013, February, March of 2000, okay. like the first weekend of March. Like I, that was when I had that meeting. And so I began praying for my daughter. I pray, mm-hmm. or my child, I didn't know what it'd be at that time, but I praying that God would help them to know him mm-hmm. and love him and follow after him and come to know him as their savior and da 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 da. Yeah. Well, when I met Kaylee, we were talking. Before we even met, we were just we would do these call phone mm-hmm. calls and Snapchat. She taught me how to do Snapchat. <laughs> Which That's I was, awesome. I oh, know it was fun, <laughs> back in the day, but it was really funny and it was terrible. But um, <laughs> anyway, she she said that she had trusted Christ as her savior in March of 2013. Oh my. So her her best friend had passed away, and wow. they had a funeral, and she was really distraught and concerned and wondering about her eternal life, and yeah, and that's when she made that decision. And wow. and I just think how cool it is that God, even though we didn't meet for two more years, yeah, that you were praying. I was a part of yeah. that, yeah. So the other the, okay, there I now have three, two more things. I that's have to good. Start. So the next thing I want to say is um. So after the adoption in November was final, a few weeks later, I get this certificate in the mail, and it is her birth certificate. And at the top, it says Kaylee Ann Fields with the, her name that I gave her, like the name she came with, but I also gave her middle name and my name. Okay. And mother, Rhonda Sue Fields, M- mother's age, 34 which is when she was born. Wow. And, and I was like, what was I doing when I was 34? I was like, oh. In May of 2003, I was going through a divorce thinking mm. I would never be a mom. Wow. And here God in his sovereignty was weaving yep. sovereignty. He yep. was weaving all this into a beautiful story. I love it. So, so when I when I did feel the call, that there a verse that God gave me because I like to have a verse to like hammer it down and yeah. write in my yeah. Bible the date. I was sitting in church and he was preaching about the woman at the well and um and I was just reading on and how the disciple said, "Hey, you need to have food." And he goes, "I have food you don't know of, and my food is the will of my Father." And look, the harvest is white and blah blah, blah and you will reap where you did not sow. You will reap where you did not labor, but you will you will join in the harvest. Wow. And I was like, that was me because I wasn't gonna labor yeah. in labor pains. Right, right. Right. But I was going to reap and sow yeah. in where someone else has labored. Wow. And so that was my and then then together we reap the harvest. Wow. So I love it. That's a God story. Those are cool. <laughs> I love the little God nuggets of how he just like I said, weaves out of his sovereignty all of those things together. But yeah. Rhonda, well, thank you for sharing that story with us. I love it. It's I feel like saying story like makes it sound like it's finished or like it's done, but it's or yeah, like, it's oh, moving. that story. No, it's such a, it's your life and and I love it. And we're grateful for you to share that part. So Rhonda, we've already like the time always goes so fast when we're in on the podcast. <laughs> I can't tell you so, but I have t- I got two I things I need to no, you did <laughs> You did great. Everybody's going to, they're going to love it. So two things I got to ask you, you, when you first came over, we mentioned something like our heart with the podcast is that people, I didn't say this on the front end, but hopefully they can feel like they can just come pull up a cup of coffee or tea or whatever they drink. And you mentioned something to me because Rhonda (laughs) does listen to our podcast and she's heard me, coffee comes up quite a bit on our podcast, but I feel like maybe you have a, something you would like to share with us. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you asked me if I wanted something to drink and I was like... I, I just like water, and, and I'm like, I'm sorry, I don't like coffee. And you're, 
no. It's just like, you're like, it's fine. I'm like, but that's what you always talk about in the good show. So yeah. just to be clear, Rhonda's still on the show. If you don't love coffee, we can all still be friends. We want you to be a part of now. That's something good. You can still be a guest on the show and not like coffee. We love, we're non-discriminatory here on the coffee <laughs> beverage drinking. Do you have, I mean, what's your normal go-to drink? Really, it is water. Okay, I, well, I, I, I used to drink a lot a of milk, choice. but I uh, tried to go dairy-free, so okay. I don't well, drink that anymore. Water's so good. I'm, I know I'm really boring and basic, but hey, that's what I prefer. <laughs> that is that is good. Okay, and then Rhonda, the last question we ask everybody oh. is, because the show is called <laughs> Now That's Something Good, what's something, do you got something good? It can be anything, just something good that you want to share with us or... I always tell people it really can be like maybe there's a new product, a new <laughs> book. And I, I don't know. Whatever. It, there's no. Okay. Well, ah, this is so hard because I every time since we talked about this, I'm like, oh, my gosh, what's something good? I don't know. What the <laughs> I thing feel is. like I'm stressing people out. So, no, that no, it's so good. I, I, there's so many good things. Like, I don't even know. But I I did come over and show you what I got for Christmas you with did, Kaylee. Yes. And that is this journaling Bible. And I love it. And I can color. And I've been coloring every night when I read the Bible. It's really cool. There's In like my these Bible. wide lines on the sides, and then there's some that have like these little pictures, right? Yes. Where you can just yes, because I'm not an artist, and I could not mm. come up with a pretty little design or either. even font or anything like that. Yeah, I, that's not me. I that's not my artistic area. So, but I can take a coloring pencil and I can color, and and I feel artistic. I feel like that's definitely something good and we can link it. We'll link it. And if you are artistic listening or whatever, you can grab one of these and it's great. And something good is always getting in God's word. And you shared quite a few verses with us, which we'll make sure to link in the show notes. But Rhonda, thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you. It was good to be here. You did good. You did great. Rhonda shared so many incredible things with us from her story. I hope you'll check out the show notes to find any links to things that we talked about or discussed. Um, And I hope that you will join us back here next week for our next episode of Now That's Something Good. Have a great week and go out and share something good with someone around you.